They've been pretty close friends about 200 years now. Americans and French have stood next to each other on the battlefields, starting, of course, with the Revolutionary War, fighting for freedom and democracy. In 1886, France gave us the Statue of Liberty, one of our most famous icons. And as Scott Rinsberger reports in tonight's Open Road, it was a Frenchman who helped create our capital city. Everywhere you look, you can see his work. There's a reason that this is the way it is. When George Washington picked Pierre Charles L'Enfant to design the federal city, it was a task monumental in scope. L'Enfant's goal was to create a world-class capital in the middle of nowhere. Farms and cows and sheep roaming. He saw the future. L'Enfant's map has become a canvas. And for more than two centuries, our nation has been painting between his lines. He left a, a very large imprint on America. Scott Berg wrote a book about L'Enfant called Grand Avenues. So when L'Enfant gets there in 1791, he looks around and he says, there, he points, you know, that's where the Capitol building is going to go. L'Enfant studied art at the Royal Academy in Paris. At the age of 22, he came to America to fight in the Revolutionary War. He was almost killed and spent time as a prisoner of war. You kind of get the sense that he had come across the ocean to prove himself. After beating the British, L'Enfant went to work laying out the new federal city. His ideas were so grand, so majestic, he had to argue for every park, circle, and square. He was sure he was right. He was sure he knew what the city should look like. And against extremely long odds, his vision was realized. His vision may have been realized, but his temperament ended his career. In 21st century terms, he had no filter and he had no, no boundaries. The Frenchman who gave up everything to be an American citizen was fired by George Washington. Starts petitioning Congress and saying, you know, I did all this and I never got a cent for it. Pierre Charles L'Enfant died completely broke. He was buried in a slave cemetery in an unmarked grave behind this mansion in Maryland. In the short term, L'Enfant, yeah, he was screwed over. But in 1909, L'Enfant's reputation was resurrected. The U.S. government exhumed his body. All they found were two bones and a tooth. Today, those remains are resting at Arlington National Cemetery, overlooking the city he designed. And what's totally remarkable about Washington, D.C., is that when we talk about it being planned, when we talk about strength, we go backwards in time to the mind of one individual. On the open road, Scott Rensberger, WUSA 9 News. Before L'Enfant died, the United States government gave the designer a small fraction of the money he requested, and those funds paid off some of his past debts. Officers with the Maryland National